Well, kids, it is our final step in winemaking today. So a wine Wednesday, here we go. <laughs> okay, so I am in my basement kitchen now, and this is where I bottle. And as you can see, it's kind of a jumble here. So each five gallon bucket that I have ready to go, a rhubarb, if you recall, is going to make fill about 24 or 25 bottles okay so I have got these washed and these are all recycled bottles that I have received from friends or just ones that I reuse myself okay so you have to soak them all in water you have to scrape all the labels off and even sometimes take like a Brillo pad type thing and get all the goo off <laughs> the glue that is holding those labels so some brands are easier <laughs> to remove than others. Mental note, because some of them are really difficult. But anyway, long story short, they are all ready to go. So I've got like 54 bottles here ready to go because I actually have 10 gallons to bottle. So this is straight rhubarb. So our process here now is to get it into our bottles. And I don't know if you can see that down here or not, but what I have going is this it's a rack and i'm sure this is some little decorative thing right but it will hold six bottles at a time and then i will fill them up now honestly the first step you need to do before you bottle is be sure that you like its taste because if it's not sweet enough or if something is off now is like the last time to fix it so i have sterilized this and we are going to take a quick step here and see what we're working with and like I said, this cleared just beautifully, so I do not have to worry about that at all. Here is my glass, so we are going to be sure that this is like perfect for straight rhubarb. We're not gonna add anything to this first five gallon pail, okay? Okay, yep, it's good. I would call this semi-sweet. I'm not super into sweet wine, so this is definitely semi-sweet. And once this is chilled, it will be perfect. <laughs> okay, so it is It is really good. Yep, yeah, we're good. I don't want it any sweeter. Okay, so we've got six bottles here. Now these six I have sterilized already, but I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about when we do that. Okay, so I mix up my sterilizing solution in a gallon carboy, and then basically we just fill not fill but you put some in there okay and then you just shake it so we shake it back and forth and even though it's called a no rinse solution I do always rinse them anyway because it does leave quite a bit of foam in there and I'm just not crazy about that since I can get it out so I do that okay so there are my sterilized bottles I fill up my rack with the six bottles and again, get as much water out as you can. All right, there they are. So my bottles are ready to go. So I'm just gonna move those out of the way. Now the second thing is, now you've seen me like rack wine from one container into another when you have to move it. Now this end I have sterilized already. So I have got another attachment I need to add. Okay, so this is what we use to bottle. So the end of this, when you're holding it down, it's going to flow, okay? But as soon as you pull that up, it's going to stop the flow. So that you have to watch as you're filling these um, so you don't overflow them. Does that make sense? It's, it really gives you much better control than just trying to wing it without this extra attachment. So what I'm doing here, this is plastic tubing, so I just heated up some water in my microwave over here and you can kind of make it more pliable. And then this other last piece is actually hard plastic. So now we are ready to go, okay? So I have already sterilized this, but since we've been playing with it again, I'm gonna sterilize it again. So I'm just gonna pour some of this solution over it and we are good to go, okay? So now I'm gonna put my bottles back on the floor because again, you wanna use gravity. Gravity is totally our friend for this. And we are just going to stick it in here 
And again, I apologize because you're not going to be able to see how this actually works. It's just going to be too low and too dark. But I'm going to get this thing going, and then I'm just going to disappear for a minute. So again, as long as you're pushing that little pin to the bottom of the bottle, you're going to get your flow started. And then you just need to watch. And I can probably show you here a little bit. Do you see how that's filling? Okay. So it does take a little bit of time. You have to be patient. But once you get in the groove, it's not that bad of a deal. You can just keep going. But I'm just going to do one here. So as soon as that wine starts coming up, the neck is really when you need to watch it. Now I can't even stick this in another bottle to wait because it will fill that thing up and we don't want that happening because now I want to show you how we cork this. Okay, so we have the one bottle full. Again, because this is not a red wine, it's probably going to be hard to tell. But see, we've got that full now and it's so crystal clear. It just looks beautiful. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. Okay, now our other step was that we had to sterilize corks. So I buy my corks in 100 count bags and then you have to heat them, okay? Because we want them to saturate. And then what you have to do, and you don't want to bring them to a boil, which is kind of crazy. You don't want to bring them to a boil. So this is my sterilizing cup now, okay? So you take these corks and you want to bob them around in the sterilizing solution. Okay, so now I've done that. And then this is my manual corker. So you can buy fancy equipment. Again, when I started, I never really thought I would get into this. So I was um, getting started on the cheap. Let's just put it that way. So we're just going to put it in here in this little hole. And then there is a piston. And as soon as you push down, it's just going to pop that thing in. I suppose I didn't get a good one. Yeah, I didn't get a very good one. We're gonna do another one here so I can show you, but it mu it's much easier when I can get a lot of weight on it, so I actually do it on the floor. It's a little bit too high for me, so this will push in because again, that cork has softened for me. So I will manually force this in further because you want it just a little bit above, but that is all you do. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to keep these upright for a day or two and then we are going to tip them all, okay? And then you leave them tipped for a day or two and then we can put them into storage. And I always leave them tipped because I think that just works better to keep those corks a little bit saturated on the one side, okay? Now I'll show you my labels. So I just found a template online. So my label says rhubarb, I'm kind of <laughs> pinned in here, <laughs> but rhubarb wine semi-sweet variety and then I date it. So that is my label. I just use easy photo splits on the back, just scrapbooking tabs and basically it's double stick tape, <laughs> okay? And then you just label it and you are good to go, that is it. So it is a process you guys, but it's so much fun and it's just really rewarding to be able to give these as gifts. So I am going to carry on because this is going to be quite a process. Now, another thing I did talk about um, before is sometimes um, you can add other things to the wine. So my intention is to bottle the full five gallons of straight rhubarb as rhubarb, okay? The second five gallons that I have down there, I'm planning to fortify it. And what I mean by that is you add other liqueurs. Now, our favorite has been the raspberry rhubarb, okay? So I add raspberry schnapps. I'm not actually using the raspberry fruit when I um, juice out in the beginning process, okay? I don't do that. I add the raspberry schnapps and that just gives it that nice little kick of flavor. And again, this is gonna be dependent on your palate. So you have to kind of mess around with that recipe on how much that is for you per bottle, okay? So for me, I'd have to look back in my notes, I guess I didn't do that ahead of time, but I just measure that out just in a Pyrex container, <laughs> like a measuring cooking container, and pour that much into the bottles before 
I siphon the wine in there and then it's perfect and it's going to be uniform consistency throughout all those bottles. Does that make sense? And then cork them up, label them appropriately, and you are good to go for a wonderful gift, um, a wonderful gift, and just a wonderful treat for anyone. So I hope you've enjoyed this, you guys. I hope that you um, get interested in doing this. And if you ever have any questions or want some guidance or direction or want to even come over and like hang out when I'm doing some of this stuff, I would welcome that. I, I love this process. I love this hobby and this craft, whatever you want to call it. And I just wanted to share it with you guys all. So I hope that again, you realize that when you do get a bottle of homemade wine, the main ingredient is love. It really is love because it is quite a process, but it's so rewarding. So enjoy each bottle that you get. Have a great Wednesday, Wine Wednesday to be exact.